Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a micro video and in this short revision topic let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the concept of X inefficiency. X inefficiency was first mentioned by the economist Harvey Liebenstein in the mid 1960s and uh, typically we use the term X inefficiency when analysing cost in imperfectly competitive markets such as monopoly duopoly and oligopoly. So what is X inefficiency? Well, it's when a lack of genuine, effective day-to-day -day competition in a market means that the average cost is higher than would be the case if the market was actually more contestable. The result is a loss of technical productive efficiency. So X inefficiency is really all about waste in the production process. And uh, here's our key definition for your notes. X inefficiency exists when any organisation incurs higher costs than are necessary to produce any given output. A business, an organisation is not producing or supplying in the cheapest, most cost effective way. So what may possibly cause X inefficiency? What are some of the root causes of waste in a production process? Uh, well, crucially, businesses uh, may not necessarily be profit maximising. They may be satisficers, happy perhaps to tolerate higher costs, higher expenses rather than optimise their supply costs. In the state sector, some state organisations, it's not inevitable, they might display some X inefficiency, particularly if they're, if they're set perhaps politically motivated targets rather than have commercial objectives at the forefront. Patent protection, legal protection of intellectual property, that might lead to some X inefficiency because if you have a patent, some sort of legal protection on a business idea, that can lead firms to believe that they're immune from day-to-day -day competition, perhaps for a decade or more. And we might also see X inefficiency in markets and businesses where there's a clear principal agent problem. The management may be pursuing their own objectives, different aims to shareholders who don't necessarily have the wherewithal, the time or the ability to monitor the decisions that management are taking in their name. Typically, without competition, in the absence of genuine competition, firms might also be a little bit more lax when sourcing from higher priced suppliers. Essentially, to capture the essence of it, the absence of the profit motive might, repeat, might take away some of the incentive to control unit costs and uh, well here's here's an obvious example so how do we show x inefficiency in a diagram not too difficult not too complicated if we think about cost per unit on the y-axis and output on the x-axis here is a typical unit cost curve with some scale economies and then you reach a minimum efficient scale and perhaps some diseconomies of production. That's not too important. The key thing is that with X inefficiency, uh, if uh, they're producing output Q1, ordinarily the cost would be C1. But with X inefficiency, can you imagine, visualise where the cost is going to be? It's going to be higher with X inefficiency. So if you're producing Q1, your unit cost might be C2 instead of C1. And that difference, that vertical distance, essentially is the wasteful extra cost from so-called productive slack. Consider the impact of that on the profitability of the firm and the returns to the equity owners of the business, the shareholders. And if it's a private, so a public sector organisation, X inefficiency with higher costs can actually mean you don't get as much value for money from your annual budget. So wasteful cost and spending can lead to a sub-optimal supply of key public services, be it in health or education or perhaps transport. So there we go, a quick look at the concept of X inefficiency.